Hello YouTube, my name's Sean Connors and welcome back to The Outsiders. Now, this week, let's build an RPG. We're going to be talking about the Path of Combat. Uh, thank you for all the information and feedback for the Path of Magic. That's been universally well liked and I really appreciate that. And now we move on to the Path of Combat. Now, um, I think before we get into the path, just to cover a couple of points that we'll come back to later, because my plan is to do the final path of the, the Rogue uh, next week, and then after that, the next video will be a dry roll-up of a character live with you here, um, to show you what that's like. I'll probably have to edit that video. I don't want it to be dry as you know, dishwater. I want it to be something exciting. So I want to show you the pro rolling up process of the character all the way through, because I know a number of you are following along. And uh, then we can go beyond the path series. Um, sorry, we can go beyond that point and then look at some details like what I'm about to cover now in more detail. So I'm going to talk about two aspects. I'm not going to cover it in any great shakes here about the path of combat, but it's important to mention that. And that is initiative and the actual chart that we'll be using for combat. I imagine the initiative system and the combat system to be very cleverly linked, and I can see a situation where we can afford to roll two dice together, 2d6, one red, say one white, nice and clear, red being combat, nice and bloody, white being initiative. Now, in combat's case, the higher the better, in initiative's case, the lower the better, because obviously every second on that dice is one second of real time, and that dice will be biased depending on the person's... Um, depending on the person's speed or manipulation. I haven't quite finalised that point yet, but that will have a basis on it, plus, of course, the weapon they're using. So there'll be certain benefits or negatives, depending on what you're using. Can you imagine if someone's got a big uh, pole arm, that should give them a benefit for initiative on the first round, so on and so on and so forth. So I, I'm just weighing up those bits. So I'm not going to really cover that off here, but it's a straight-line initiative system. So what does that really mean? It means, basically, when you've rolled your initiative and you've attempted your attack, you roll your initiative again, and you'll have done that by rolling the two dice together, you'll know when your next attack will come afterwards. So it is possible, depending on the tactics people employ, and that's half the fun, that you might get more than one blow in before somebody else. And I really, really like that. And it opens up a whole plethora of opportunities and options that we can go down as a designer, which is really nice, rather than the round-by-round -round static initiative. Now, we'll have a quick look at the combat chart here, but I'm not going to take too much time but I need to explain a factor about it and the reasons why I've gone down this route in dry testing. Dry testing is effectively where it's not been play tested, it's your thoughts based on experience and why you've done it the way you've done it because of the reasons that I'm about to give. So in dry testing the chart looks like this. Now this won't mean a lot but along the top is the offensive skill and along the side is the defensive skill. So to give you an example um, it's, and it's weighted for defence, and it has to be because each point on a D6 is roughly roughly 15.4%, so that's significant advantage, every point's worth about 15%. So even if somebody had a skill, offensive skill of 5, and somebody was up against a defensive skill of 2, they would need to roll 4 or better, so they have a 50% chance. But you'll notice it's weighted in the defender's case. Excuse me, totally weighted. And that's the way that it will work. And the reason is because of the D6 exploding mechanic, excuse me, and the fact that um, you know I'm aware of the issues around using that mechanic and what it will do for us. So that's the reason it's weighted. But I've found in dry testing this works very well. And in this game, every point you exceed by um, is the damage that you actually do, plus, of course, any factors that might play in high strength, weapon damage, that sort of thing can play in. It can work in very well. Not doing bonuses to hit based on strength, but I'm certainly doing bonuses to damage based on strength because the system already works well enough without needing that factor in. So anyway, just a little touch on that, but we'll, we'll cover that off in due course. Now for the rest of this video, we're going to be talking about the path of combat, so let me show you that path in a little bit of detail. Now the path of combat, apologies about any spelling errors on here, this is just a dry write down. These are always, always handwritten notes, that's how I like to, to work as a designer. So we have uh, attack, we have three forms of defence, dodge, disarm and parry, which makes sense. And there are then three options off here that somebody could explore straight away. You have over on this side quick draw, which is very useful in different situations, particularly when uh, one is surprised or hasn't reacted yet in initiative. That can help you get your weapon out fast. We have two weapon fighting, again for the reasons we've spoke about the initiative system, this could be really interesting and open up a number of options. If you've got two weapons, they would have separate initiatives, but... It's, again, easy to work out because you're only doing... Although it sounds complicated, you're only do it, you're following the initiative each time. So four, initiative four, you go, no. Five, that's my first weapon. Six, no. Seven, that's my second weapon. And you, it's easy enough to follow along. 
Then you reach the various specialisms. So you've got bow, spe um, bow master, uh, weapon master, and sword master. I'll talk a little bit about those skills in a moment, and then finally extra attack. So you can see that it's pretty. It is qu quicker to get down to this point, but every single attack is not the same for every weapon that you own. You have to develop each weapon separately. And I'm deliberately, excuse me, I'm deliberately making sure that this system has a number of options to make it so that not everybody specialises in in the one weapon. There are lots of reasons why you need to think about your defensive skills. There's a lot of reasons why you need to think about the different uh, different weapon categories, size, etc. You know, two-handed weapons used in a five-foot corridor are going to be very difficult to do, to be honest. Well, these things should be factored in. It should force the players to think a little bit creatively. I'd like to do that. I'd like to have a think about that. And I think this system can cope with it. So um, on the back of the sheet, what I've done is I've broken those skills down and given them associated cost, anything from 200 right the way up to extra attack, um, which has got 300. But um, there are rules around how many extra attacks somebody can get. Um, there are also going to be... Um, each weapon will have, again, a cost associated with, hence the fact that it doesn't have one associated to it at this moment that you see the sheet. That's very dependent on the weapon that's actually chosen. Now, I'm going to cover off a couple of other final things because it's probably apt to do so, which is to talk about the Pacific uh, fighting skills in a little bit more detail. So let me give you an example of a uh, quick draw on how I foresee that it could play in under surprise, for example. So normally when you're surprised, um, six is added to that round's initiative. But if you have quick draw, other rules come into play. So for every two levels of quick draw a character has, he or, sub he or she subtracts one from the surprise factor. So it's quite nice and simple. Um, and also to find out if somebody's actually surprised for a round, I had a really nice thought around it. I thought we could base that on attunement, uh, which is kind of kind of quite cool to see whether they've noticed something. And it was up to the DM whether it's 3d6 against attunement, 4d6, or 5d6 against attunement. Kind of like that, depending on the enemy. That's a nice little simple mechanic to give you an idea of how it would work. Um, as we've got a little bit of time at the end of the video, let's go on to um, let's go on to sword, bow, and weapon master skills. So for every two levels, somebody has in Sword Master, and again it has to be specifically picked which weapon it is that they're going down. I haven't completely finalised that yet because I may allow Sword Master to play in for all the weapons of that group. It sort of makes sense thinking about it here, dry testing as we are, but we'll come back to that. Um, you gain one point of extra damage when you succeed and hit, which is kind of nice. Um, the skill reflects or, uh, or, or sorry, the skill reflects your better improving fighting techniques. And also, for every four levels of mastery in a chosen skill, you may also buy the skill extra attack. So that's how extra attack comes in once you have uh, four levels or more. So you can see there's a there's a cap in there. You get one at four, you can master in particular in a particular weapon. Then at eight with that particular weapon, and then if you are able to, then at twelve. So again, if there are some certain negatives, you can see how it will play in. Complicated, but certainly very playable. So anyway, I'm not going to go too much further this week because, again, these things, there's a lot to take in here and I appreciate there are a lot of factors that we haven't covered off. But um, as we go into dry testing the characters beyond the next path, which will be the path of the road next week, um, we can then look at other details. We'll come back to the combat one, look at the weapons in a little bit more detail, look at the sheet in a little bit more detail after it's been play tested a lot more heavily. Um, and also we can look at how... In, in play test or a live test with yourselves, we can actually see how the initiative system would work. So you can see it in number form in front of you, which is always the best way. Anyway, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much for all the comments. They are massively appreciated. As I say, these uh, responses are shown to our uh, play testers, and it does definitely help us formulate the game going forward. So thank you for that. I look forward to seeing you all soon. Take care of yourselves and happy gaming. And I'll speak again soon. Bye-bye.